Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Alina Islam, and I'm a Senior Research Associate here at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar focuses on Churchill Resources, an emerging exploration company focused on the battery metal space and on advancing its Taylor Brook and Florence Lake nickel copper projects in Newfoundland and Labrador. For the webinar today, we have with us Paul Sobey, CEO of Churchill. Paul will provide an introduction to the company, including an overview of its portfolio and the exploration work ongoing at some of its projects. Paul may also discuss upcoming catalysts that are on the horizon for the company. After the presentation, we'll take your questions live. Please send us your questions via the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can. Before we get started though, I just wanted to mention a few disclosures. For Churchill Resources, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Churchill Resources corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Church of Resources specific disclosures. With that, I'll hand it over to you, Paul. Please take it away. Thanks very much, Alina, and thanks Red Cloud for organizing this. I'm just going to share a screen here, so just bear with me. Churchill, um, yes, as, uh, as Alina mentioned, we're focused on nickel projects, nickel sulfide projects, and uh, our two that we are concentrating on are in Newfoundland and Labrador. So the reason, of course, that we are looking for nickel sulfides is because there's a shortage, generally, um, in that Existing production is in decline, and uh, of course, uh, the electrification and uh, and uh, battery battery powered vehicles is going to uh, require an awful lot more. We have seen um, numbers like this one you see here: 1.6 million tons of new nickel supply would be needed annually. That's 10 times what Valet produces in Canada, for instance. So, enormous amounts, but there will be. Um, recycling of used batteries, which will, which will lessen that amount with time. Our two projects are in partnership with Altius in, um, in Newfoundland. Altius is a very, very successful project generator and royalty company that I'm sure you know. And, and really Churchill was formed to, uh, to take on the, uh, the Altius properties, nickel properties in Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, we've structured two year options on each of them very short uh, time span options such that we can either really, really love them or, or move on from them in a, in a, in a rapid fashion. So uh, Altius, of course, is based in St. John's and they've been enormously helpful to me and to the company in terms of introductions to key personnel, contractors, that sort of thing. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry. We uh, recently closed on uh, a $4 million uh, mainly flow through raise um, in March 30th, actually. So the company is well funded. Uh, we've got about $5 million in the treasury, and that is good for at least a year of the exploration work that we want to do, as well as overhead. So, uh, so we're in good shape. Management owns 14% of the, uh, the existing shares at this time, and, and we've got a large institutional shareholding. The two projects in Newfoundland and Labrador. Now, both of these are high-grade high target models. Taylor Brook is on the island of Newfoundland, and past results have, uh, have included this borehole you see here, four meters of 1.63% nickel. You know, a very, very good um, uh, intersection, and really we're looking for Boise Bay-type mineralization at Taylor Brook. Florence Lake is more akin to Raglan or Thompson, so the volcanic-hosted mineralization. And this is an ex Falconbridge project in Labrador, south of Boise Bay Mine. And again, a very, very good intersection. One of a number that, uh, that Falconbridge got in, uh, in the area of one of their showings. In both cases, we're following up on these projects. They haven't been worth in a long, long time. And we're bringing state-of-the-art sort of 2021-2022 20, uh, exploration methods to these projects to try and expand on 
what the, the past explorers found. So we got started at um, Taylor Brook last year and there our initial program was quite successful in that we believe that we've identified a kilometer scale mineralized intrusive. So something as similar to Voise Bay or uh, Tamarack, uh, Talon's project in Minnesota, but we're at very, very early stage at this point. But the positive thing is, is that we've identified that it looks like it's a very large structure that we will be evaluating. So to follow that up this year and with our enlarged treasury, we're drilling 5,000 meters in the immediate area of the discovery. We're doing a lot of surface EM as well as borehole EM. And we've also um, engaged a, a helicopter magnetic system, the Heli GT system, to fly very, very detailed mag over this corridor such that we have better structural information for targeting. At Florence Lake, the one up in Labrador, the VTEM survey, so this is an EM survey uh, also flown from a helicopter, it, uh, it's nearing completion and uh, we will be following up that as well as all past uh, anomalies with geochem and prospecting in the summer. And then if all goes well, 2,500 meters of drilling in the, in the fall. The company also has its two original diamond projects and we are garnering some interest on those. So we hope to be able to do something in terms of a transaction that would be beneficial to shareholders. And uh, the team is uh, myself and two other very experienced uh, geologists on the board. We are adding to the board later this month with other skills. Uh, and myself, my background is consulting. I own a company called MPH Consulting, which I've wound up basically uh, to concentrate on Churchill, but a lot of experience along with uh, Bill and Kevin. And there is, um, there is a, an appendix which gives our bios. The most important person on the team, though, is Dawn Evans Lambswood. She joined us last year and she is a, she is a nickel sulfide expert, uh, spent a lot of her career at Voise's Bay. And we're uh, you know, very lucky to have her and she's leading our, our evaluations. So what we're gonna be concentrating on during the, the next uh, uh, seven, eight months, I guess, is, uh, is really intensive work at Taylor Brook. So the 5,000 meters of drilling, I told you, which will be in the area of the discovery and this 800 meters of strength length. So what we have at Taylor Brook, and this is a three-dimensional image of the magnetics but we've identified that the discovery, the original discovery and the drilling that was done in the past is hosted by a discrete intrusive volcanic rock. Uh, it's called a gabbro norite. It's the right sort of rock to host this type of mineralization, these conduits, but it's been offset by a fault. And we are gonna be chasing this extension of it and uh, doing a lot more surface EM and borehole EM in order to find new drill targets we do have some more drilling in this area that we have to do to hit these higher, uh, higher conductance um, plates. And, and that will be the first thing we start up at the end of the month. So we have intersected interesting mineralization, but you know nothing that's, uh, that's sort of 10 meters of massive sulfides or anything like that yet. We believe we're on the trail of it though. And then at Florence Lake, of course, the summer will be spent following up on the, the airborne and geochem anomalies. And uh, that should generate some new targets for what we hope will be fall drilling. And then, as I mentioned, we continue to uh, have discussions about our diamond projects in the background. The, uh, the company looks like this, and this includes the, the recent raise. So um, about 12 million of those shares are actually uh, still in escrow for another month or two. But really, uh, you know, we're now up to about 58 million shares uh, outstanding. I think we're still trading in the 30 cent range. Uh, as I mentioned, about five million dollars in the Treasury. So we're in good, a good stead. You know, um, warrants were issued for uh, or half warrants were issued for the first time on this latest raise. So we don't have a lot of that. Um, outstanding. The uh, the cap structure looks about like this. So management and the original founders of the company were at 14% now. Altius is at 4%. They can increase to 19.9% upon successful execution of, uh, of the options. Two projects now. So Taylor Brook was our first project. We use this as our qualifying transaction to go public. It's in Newfoundland. And Florence Lake is in coastal Labrador. 
As I mentioned, we spent well well over a million dollars actually at uh, Taylor Brook last year, and and we're further along at Taylor Brook for a number of reasons. One, it was the first deal. Two, uh, it's just easier logistically. It couldn't be any better at Taylor Brook. And as I mentioned, you know we're we're quite excited about what we found there, and we believe we understand these past intersections now and what they might mean in. Uh, up in uh, Florence Lake, the VTEM survey is about 60% done now. It should finish up this week. And then, as I mentioned, a bunch of follow-up work to follow. This is nickel country, though. If you look at the major nickel deposits and nickel camps in Canada, they basically surround the, uh, the Superior Craton, the Canadian Shield, if you will. And, of course, our two projects are in this area here. Taylor Brook is first now. So uh, this is the one on Newfoundland. And this is a picture here of Don Evans back in 2003 visiting the Discovery Outcrop uh, when she was still working for Inco. So Inco was taken over by, by Valet, of course. And this Discovery Outcrop actually tells you quite a lot. As you can see that these very rusty bits, this is the high grade mineralization. So this is near massive sulfides and it's surrounding blocks of disseminated mineralization, where it's just orange in this picture. Um, the host rock, the actual volcanic rock I mentioned, or intrusive rock, this gabbro norite, that's a picture of it right there. So it's very dark rock. When it's wet, it looks almost black. But the important thing is that it's a breccia here and, uh, and that the mineralization seems to be concentrated on this side. And uh, this is starting to make some sense to us. The, uh, the outcrop now is very, very weathered, as you can see in this picture I took last fall. And, um, you know, there's a, you can see less of the detail, actually, than you could uh, back when Dawn was there in 2003. Logistically, Taylor Brook couldn't be any better. We uh, were just north of the city of Deer Lake. I fly into Deer Lake when I'm going to the project. There's direct flights from Toronto, less than three hours. Then it's less than an hour up to our camp, which is on the edge of the property. The camp is a, a, an ex um, a hydro camp, so it's a permanent permanent place, and uh, and we rent it when we're active. We have our own core tents up in this area now, and our core is accumulating. Our drillers come from Deer Lake, so they're only an hour away from the project, um, you know, and uh, we're just off the Trans Canada Highway. Power line is coming down from Churchill Falls right beside the project. So if we were to discover something here uh, of substance, then development costs uh, would be would be relatively modest. And of course, Valet has the world's most modern nickel refinery down near St. John. So it could all work quite nicely. The past work on the property, uh, basically, they were working in the area of that outcrop that I showed you. And that outcrop was discovered when a logging road went in. And they had three good intersections. Two were on a dike-like uh, body away from the, uh, the laden showing, the discovery outcrop. And here they, uh, they intersected a narrow ultramafic dike. And they got some good intersections, as you can see, 1.71% over four meters. So, you know, it's a, a very interesting but small looking uh, target model. At Leyden, again, they thought they were chasing a dike, but we in fact have now shown that this is a much, much larger body and hence we're very interested. Regionally, of course, we're right on the edge of the Canadian Shield, which is right there. And there's a very, very large layered gabroic intrusive here. And this would be you know, in, in simplest terms, the engine or the, the, the driver of uh, the sulfide mineralization. The mineralization looks like this in core. So that's the semi-massive stuff. Doesn't quite get to massive, but it's close. And the disseminated mineralization here. Uh, this is our drill that was uh, drilling in the fall. You can see we're in sort of uh, rolling hills. We're right in the, the foothills of the Long Range Mountains, which are just to the west of us. And uh, we've really been waiting for the snow to clear up. There was still 10 feet of snow uh, in some of these areas as of last week, but it's been warm and uh, we're, we'll be ready to go with new drilling at the end of the month. The, uh, the regional picture is very, very interesting and, and it gets more interesting as, as we learn more and more. So here's kind of the edge of the Canadian Shield. There's the big Taylor Brook Gabbro. Here's our property and the known mineralization. 
and there's a very, very regional, very, very large fault here that, that, that bounds the edge of the craton. And we've recently just acquired this ground here from Altius in that the gravity anomaly that is associated with our Taylor Brook Gabbro extends quite far down to the Southwest. So we kind of feel that this is the, if you will, this is the guts or the, uh, the interior of a former mountain range. And, uh, you know, it all has potential. So we'll be doing regional exploration along the new Cormac property and much more intensive mineralization between the Leyden showing and down to the, uh, what we think is, a, is a, an earlier phase of the Taylor Brook Gabbro, this highly magnetic and uh, highly dense gravity anomaly correlates with one part of the Taylor Brook Gabbro. And that's what we're, uh, we're thinking is, is likely the, uh, the engine or the driver of the mineralized system. What the system looks like, um, these are called sub-horizontal magma conduits in geological parlance, but you know, it's, it's basically um, a conduit or, a, or a, a system of mineralization that is intruded into a, a host rock, in our case, our gabbro norite, and uh, these systems can be quite large and they can go for quite a ways. The uh, one in the news recently was Eagle's Nest in Ontario, which uh, was bought out. The Canadian company Norot was bought out for 617 million by Wailu of Australia. And there you can see they had reserves of 11 million tons of very, very good grade, including a very, very good palladium number and uh, another 9 million tons of resources. So 20 million tons was worth $6 million in a very remote setting. We think, you know, we're out on the edge of one of these types of systems, maybe out in the disseminated mineralization area, and we've got to find our way back to uh, the sweet spot. So we flew VTEM, which is a strong uh, EM conductive system last year. And in the area of the Leyden showing, we had some strong conductive trends here. And these darker symbols are, are the very, very strong conductors. But as well, our magnetics on the survey was showing that the Leyden intrusive seemed to be hosted by a discrete magnetic body. And that's what I'm circling here with my, with my mouse. So this became our focus for the 2021 exploration work. And there is the, uh, is the mag high, the, the discrete magnetic feature. And the EM was, was uh, resolved into conductive plates. And what we uh, were able to discern is that this conductive plate here, which is basically sitting vertical and it's about 70, 80 meters below surface, was hit by this two previous drill holes back in 2008 with the good grades. We had a satellite to it, a much larger conductor. So we put three of our first holes into that, as well as one more that undercut the previous drilling. And we got similar numbers. We haven't published it yet, but I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of a, a head start here in that, you know, our best number is, is this one here, which we got in hole seven, similar numbers through here. So we do have, you know, some strike extent to this mineralized dike, but thus far, no indications of significant tonnage. It remains thin. Um, and we therefore continue to believe that this is the more important or, or more uh, pro prospective uh, phase of what we're looking at here in this mineralized system. And the rest of our drilling really went into, into this area here. What we were able to discern with all of our drilling and all of our uh, geophysics is that that fault I told you about is offsetting the extension of this, this unit. So it, it trends this way, but it's been offset by this fault such that this is the extension here, which has never been tested in any way. And when we did borehole EM, we've got quite a cluster of plates down, down below the laden showing, which to this point we haven't been able to hit, or we did not hit, I should say, with our first holes, but we are going to target with 2022 drilling. We have interesting mineralization. As you can see, it gets up to something that kind of looks like laden, but it's, it's not as rich, it's not as extensive, and, and really laden remains the the sign that there's something very, very uh, high grade here. And we believe it's now trending down through this cluster of, of conductive plates there. So that's target number one for 2022. You can see it a little bit better here. So 
that's the magnetic high. This is the area where all the, uh, the nice red and purple plates are. This would be high grade or higher grade mineralization, I should say. So we need a couple of holes into that area and that's where we'll be starting. Here, we need new holes and uh, as well, what we're doing is surface EM, time domain EM, and that is will be giving us new targets in the next week or two. So just to bring you back, there is the area of the, the laid and showing and the area we've drilled. We're doing a bit more drilling there and then we're gonna move off along strike. Now, you can see that it's very complex and, and we can't tell with any degree of confidence yet which one is our conduit and which one is just related to the much, much larger Gabbro complex. But what we have is an enormous amount of conductivity picked up in the airborne survey in this area. That's all these white and uh, dark symbols you see. Hence the need for much, much more high resolution EM. And this is the position of the first five loops that we're doing. And the, the surveys will go up and down our line. So we do have traditional line cutting going on here. It's active as we speak. As well, uh, we are going to be permitted for all of these drill sites, you see. So we can follow along the trend here very, very easily on existing roads. There's no road building required. So the drilling will go, uh, will go very, very smoothly. And uh, this is an existing logging road, so mud isn't an issue. So we do anticipate, you know, very good production once we get started after Victoria Day. And as well, um, we're flying this 50 meter, very, very detailed survey. So all along this trend, all the way down to the big Gabbro stock. And this again is to help us with better information, much better information about faults and folds along this trend here. And, and those combined with the, uh, the time domain EM, the surface loop EM, is really going to give us a strong picture and strong drill targets. So in three dimensions, you can see here's our trend. And this is our shallow, what we believe is the conduit, the host of the conduit. But it's very broken up. And hence the need for, you know, the surface geophysics we're doing. And as well, the, uh, the airborne, very, very detailed mag. It'll give us a much, much more accurate picture of what it looks like. And and where the targets are moving forward and all that work, you know, will be uh, accomplished in the next month or so. The, uh, the model for what we have is perhaps best, uh, best um, um, emulated by, by what Talon has at Tamarack. And, uh, and here, you know, the, the deposits form at the bottom of this system. We think this is the bottom of our system and we should be seeing mineralization there. Moving on, Florence Lake. So this is the one up in Labrador. This is the helicopter access position or property. So I was there in the summer and that's myself with uh, Lawrence Winter, Vice President of Exploration of Altius. And we're examining one of the mineralized outcrops there. It's very, very well positioned for Labrador. It's very close to tidewater. This is in fact a long inlet in from the ocean. So access is good. Our property is here. We've actually tied up the two, the two blocks together now. Um, and we're 70 kilometers from the, uh, the village of Postville. That is where the helicopter is based presently. That's flying the airborne survey. As mentioned, that work is nearing completion. So this town offers uh, all support that we would need, including uh, ferry, ferry trips back to Happy Valley Goose Bay and plane uh, scheduled flights daily. Uh, and we'll be based out of there for the initial summer work, the geochem and prospecting work. Once we're drilling, that will be um, a case where we would uh, share a camp with uh, one of our neighbors, Labrador Uranium, which is drilling just, we'll be drilling just down here. So we will uh, combine forces with them and discussions are ongoing now about uh, how that'll all work. We will need good luck though, in terms of quick turnaround from the labs and all of these sorts of things to have generated targets in time for the fall drilling season. Geology here, so it's entirely different. These are what's called greenstone belts, very, very old volcanic belts of rocks. They were intruded onto the basement, onto the Canadian Shield. And the very first intrusions are the ultramafix and this is what Falcon Bridge was concentrating on. So these rocks are younger than these rocks. The darker green here is the Ultra Mafix. And that's where Falcon Bridge was able to identify six nickel showings back in the early 1990s. 
the Bakey and DCP showings were the ones that had the most potential and where they did the most drilling. This is our crew out in the summer. We went primarily to uh, see the property, but as well to recover the old core and, and resample it. And as you can see, it was in uh, some state of disrepair. It's about to collapse, but we were able to uh, resample all of the good intersections. And uh, that work was quite successful. We duplicated or exceeded the Falkland Bridge numbers in a lot of cases. So uh, very, very confidence inspiring in terms of moving forward on the project. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I'm hoarse. We're flying uh, the VTEM survey, and it'll be very detailed, 50 meter line spacing over the area of known nickel showings. And that's because the, we really don't have a good geophysical database. We only have magnetics and it's very coarse. So this will be replaced very soon in my presentation with uh, very, very detailed work that we hope will be showing conductive plates in the areas of the known showings, but as well more along strike here and more targets. We believe this is another ultramafic belt here. And the one area I mentioned, the Bakey showing where there'd been very, very good results. This is one area where they seem to be establishing one of these raglan type channels that, that grow into a true deposit, but they lost it at depth. That can be due to defaulting or folding of the channel. And we're hopeful that our modern deeper geophysics will give us some clues about uh, what happened and where to drill in order to see the continuation of these rather nice intersections. Third project in the portfolio that has nickel potential is called Pelly Bay. It's our original diamond project. It's up in Nunavut. And there, the junior that was working it back in 2008 uh, identified a Gossen from a helicopter, dropped down, sampled it, and it turned out to be sulfide bearing. And not just a little bit sulfide bearing, but, but very, 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 very rich. And uh, they drilled six holes into it. They were all of uh, this sort of tenor, so very, very good grades. Uh, but it was 2008, the markets had collapsed and, uh, and really they weren't able to move it forward. They did have a short-lived uh, JV with MMG, a base metal company. And that produced some more data, including very, very good uh, EM, uh, airborne EM. We have compiled all of that through uh, uh, working with Goldspot Discoveries. So we now know this property inside and out, both from its diamond potential, which is significant, and as well its nickel, copper, and gold potential. So it really does have enormous potential, but this is in the Arctic. It is sort of a $5 million uh, field season kind of budget. So it remains a portfolio project uh, in Churchill at this time. Its diamond potential, and this is it again, is significant. 20 of the known 20 of the 26 known diamond known kimberlites are diamondiferous on this property. Several of them with very high grade signatures. It was a very great interest to BHP before they exited Canada. And, uh, you know, we believe that with a, a one field season here, we would be at the resource delineation stage on some of the better kimberlites and as well making some significant discoveries. The, uh, and that's notwithstanding its nickel and its gold potential. Uh, the other property we have is called White River. It is near the Hemlo Gold Mine in Ontario. Here, we're just off the Trans-Canada Highway. Access is very, very good, like at Taylor Brook. And here, it's diamond-bearing dikes that are quite large, uh, you know, up to 10 meters in width. And they have been a, seen a little bit of evaluation by Rio Tinto at this one area called Rabbit's Foot. And there, a small bulk sample did produce commercial-sized stones of nice quality and uh, we have the rest. So it's an exciting project that we, uh, we hope to find a home for very soon. And uh, you know, that's where I will leave it, I think. I do have a bunch of, um, of appendices I can, uh, I can go to if needed, but um, I think we should open it up for, uh, for questions. Well, thanks, Paul. Um, that was a great presentation. Uh, so we'll now start the Q&A portion of this webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a reminder to everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. So first question, Paul, um, at Taylor Brook, the phase one program, when do you expect to publish the assays from it? Ah, very sorry. I meant to uh, mention that during the 
presentation. We expect, and I, and I did go into the lab when I was in Newfoundland last, uh, last week, we expect the results this week uh, by the end of the week. So we should have an announcement early next week that would have all of our drill results. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so looking ahead, you have 5,000 meters coming up for the summer, then mm -hmm. geochem uh, prospecting planned after that. And then I think I saw somewhere in a follow-up 2,500 meter program. Would that be something you would look to do next yeah, year? Yeah, so, so we're keeping that in reserve, in, in budgetary reserve, and that I think the 5,000 meters we are probably going to expend in this area here where we're hitting very hard and we have a lot of uh, conductivity to understand. 2,500 meters uh, might be further afield in uh, the southeast direction. And we still have some targets to the northwest as well that we already have permitted for drilling that we never got to last year. So it'll be a bit of um, you know uh, a bit of decision making as uh, as we see what these targets look like and how enticing they are compared to the area we're uh, we're starting with in May. All right, great. Um, so just staying on the topic of Taylor Brook, mm -hmm. um, the ground that you acquired recently to the south of the project, yes, I believe that was originally staked for gold potential. It was, yeah. So what led you to um, acquire that, that package and, and add right. it to the property? Two things. So, you know, our original property that we, we took from Altius was this one. We added Taylor Brook South when we became aware of this gravity anomaly. And then our magnetics, our own magnetics, was really showing us that it's all hanging together. There is a truly different magnetic phase to the Gabbro down here. So we, I, I spoke with Altius about this license here in that it has a little bit of the Gabbro in it and a little bit of the, uh, the very, very strong gravity anomaly and mag anomaly. Uh, but also, um, I should add that you, we can't stake in this area because it's protected. So um, the gravity anomaly in a regional context, although this is the most intense part of it, actually extends all the way down here. Now, there are known gold deposits associated with this Deucer Valley's fault. Um, but from our perspective, this gravity anomaly is really telling us that, you know, we're down very, very deep in this ancient mountain system. And therefore, it could have nickel potential, it could have copper potential, almost anything really. So we are going to be doing stream sediment sampling all along these, uh, these claims in the next couple of weeks. And we'll see what comes out of the, uh, the concentrates. You know, it could be nickel, could be gold, could be, uh, could be copper, could be almost anything really. Um, so very, very enticing sort of area. But our primary interest will remain, you know, nickel. We don't intend to morph into a gold company. Okay. Um, so moving on to Florence Lake, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you touched on this during your presentation, but um, when are the VTEM results coming? Ah, that's a, a difficult question to answer. So the VTEM survey should be completed by the, uh, hopefully by the end of this week or the end of this weekend. The contractors have been horribly slow, and it's not just the one we're using, it's all of them in terms of turning a survey data, survey data into, uh, you know, a preliminary interpretive data that, that one can use. But we will be pushing them very, very hard to get the preliminary data. And, um, you know, the final data could be as long as six months, but the preliminary data, hopefully uh, uh, four to six weeks. And from that, we'll be planning our, uh, our follow-up geochem and prospecting. So any further details on drilling at Florence Lake or are you going to see uh, what the results no. are like? Yeah, it's just too early to say. We have a gold spot has finished the compilation of all of the historical and regional data done by governments. We'll marry that with the VTEM results and what Falconbridge did in the past and really plan from there. You know, it, it, it is tempting to just go with, go back to the Bakey showing and say we'll drill a bunch of holes here. But until I see what our geophysics comes up with, um, you know, uh, I think we'll just 
we'll hold off on, on any statements to that effect. Let's, let's see what we come up with in terms of other targets uh, and maybe seeing Bakey more clearly before we're definitive about where we'll drill and how much we'll drill and when. Okay, sounds good. Um, so moving on to your diamond project, I know you mentioned mm -hmm. a potential transaction. Any clarity or can you talk about when that may come? No, I really can't. Uh, discussions are at preliminary stages with, with two groups. Um, I could tell you that, you know, one would probably be um, a joint venture uh, from an existing diamond producer, whereas the others would be kind of a new co situation. Um, but both are very, very preliminary at this at this stage. So uh, no clarity there at all. But it is a, you know, it is a focus of mine. I am a, a diamond geologist uh, as much as anything else. And, and, you know, these are great projects with a lot of, uh, a lot of potential at a time when, again, um, you know, production is diminishing worldwide, uh, not only, in, you know, not only because of uh, the embargo on Russian diamonds, but in Canada as well. I mean, uh, Diavik is nearing the end of its, of its productive life. Ducati isn't far behind. Uh, you know, so it is time for, for some good diamond exploration projects in Canada. Right. So lots to look forward to in 2022, I see. Um, last question here, Paul, mm -hmm. um, could you just, uh, maybe sum up the key catalyst for our investors, uh, let's say in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, well. You know, Florence Lake will move it along slowly, uh, but there's nothing that's going to be a catalyst, I would say, unless we see, you know, really phenomenal looking V10 targets. So it's going to be Taylor Brook that, that drives the company and, and drives our news flow. And really, I guess this slide here is probably the best one in that, you know, the extension of Taylor Brook, and this is the area where we'll have surface EM and the VTEM results and, uh, you know, we'll be generating new targets. This, I think, is the most exciting area that we'll, we'll be drilling. We do believe that we will get some good results in this area at Leyden, but it's offset by the fault. So it really becomes a case of moving along strike and, you know, we'll see what we get along this trend. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got, you know, about a kilometer here that we're hitting very hard with a lot of uh, a lot of information, a lot of uh, geophysical systems. And then moving along, of course, there'll be prospecting and geochem results all along the late and intrusive trend. And that's it here. You know, so um, I think it'll be it'll be those announcements that that really are the catalyst for the, the company as well as hopefully something that's quite uh, profound that we do with the diamond assets. All right, great. Um, well, that's it for the Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, Paul, uh, I'd like to thank you for taking time to host this webinar with us today. Uh, just as a reminder for our audience, our next webinar will feature Klondike Gold Corp on Wednesday, May 18th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for tuning in with us, everyone. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your attention.